You describe yourself as someone who, quote, accelerates successful startups into market leading companies. Uh, can you tell me about your, your process uh, of this? What are some of the most common things that startups are lacking that you can provide? Yeah, um, it's again a very, very broad question, and there's mm -hmm. no one way of, um, of skinning the cat. There are many ways, and many, many, many of them a lot more successful than what I have done so far. But you know, from from my vantage point, uh, there's a couple of things. One is, it's the team. Um, it's the early team you put together. Um, it's very important. You got to be aligned. You got to be resilient. You got to be resilient from um, um, your your learning ability to change, you know, every six months, not a year, there's a technology debt, no matter what you do, right? Yeah, for sure. Things are changing so fast, you're resilient against um, um, uh, change, uh, competition, how you do, you got to stay in power to stay. So you got to be very really conservative in the beginning to get the first um, minimal viable product done right, right? It has to be, you know, we got to constantly look at product market fit. Uh, early stages, if you don't get the product market fit, um, you know, rest falls apart. So the right team to get the product market fit and being resilient about it and scrumming the heck out of it in a daily and incremental progress is probably the, the single most thing. And you can do that with the least amount of money. You can pay yourself two, three hundred thousand dollars so you don't get paid and make that stupid thing work. Yes. And get the customer as, as quickly as you can. Most of the people are worried about printing of the presentations, working five-year plan. It's all bullshit. Every fire plan never works. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's 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 it gonna go up in flames yeah. in a year anyway, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and it's an in thing. You read up an article, I'm gonna go to Sequoia, I'm gonna go to Redpoint, I'm gonna go to IVP, I'm gonna go to benchmark, I'm gonna go to this guy, that guy. But if you don't get the market product fit done right first with, re with resiliency and staying power month two, three, four, five, six, and sacrificing, your priority is becoming different because now you're trying to pretty up a presentation and tell some story into a fire plan, which you don't even know who's going to buy first. Right. And you're busy raising money and you're looking for some yeah. connection, some introduction. Hey, yeah, you're, 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 looking, you're looking too many steps ahead, I imagine, right? Steps ahead, yeah. So, and it becomes very difficult. It doesn't really matter. People think, oh, I want to go get an angel money, quarter million to half a million from someone like me or they want to go get eight, nine, $10 million. You know, a million to two was the early stage fund in eighties and nineties, right? Yeah. Now they don't talk to you. They want to put 10, $20 million to, to work because they got big funds. But right. then doesn't mean that an angel guy is going to give you some funding if there's no product market fit. Yeah, You can't say, you're my buddy, give me some money, right? Yeah. Maybe, some, might, some might do that, and but but most of the guys, you and I don't have a chance, right? You need to be related to someone big, you are connected yep. to someone big, but you got to get that thing done right or two or three teams very aligned and, and, and it gets difficult because in the beginning, um, it's like, you know, you know, the map, when you look at the map, uh, it's totally different than when you put your foot on the terrain. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. The same thing as a startup, you and I, and a few other guys can come together. Let's go do this. Let's go fun. We've been buddies. We're in the same school, whatever the stuff is like, I'm a PhD at this. I'm putting something together. Um, um, but then, you know, when rubber meets the road, the terrain is different. Yeah. And you have to be very careful on that. That's one big piece, um, product market fit. And, uh, and then also you want to pursue, um, you know, at least from my standpoint, pursue something that could be big because your risk goes down. And of course, execution becomes a difficult thing too, but within a big environment, you can pick pieces of it. For example, when I did the previous company, um, we had phenomenal guys. We had um, a professor from Stanford, Bill Daly, who was, an, who was an NVIDIA's chief scientist now. We had like 16 PhDs from Stanford to MIT's to Caltech's of the world. We raised a bunch of money from Sequoia. We were trying to do something massive in terms of communication protocols, in terms of moving bandwidth. Yeah. Getting, uh, but very niche. For us to succeed, I had to get the damn thing working. Then I had to get an OEM like Cisco working. They had to get an AT and T, you know, some telecom guy working. So that you need to have a staying power. So you, oh, we got the chip done, but the venture guys get tired after four or five years. Yeah. And as you raise more money, the first guy who came in gets tired because he wants to see some results. He doesn't he have much to say. Yeah. Right. So structuring the right company is very, very, very important. Who you get your money from. 
Yep. And how long does the money last? If you don't plan that right, raising $10 million, first round, you open a champagne, you celebrate high five, <laughs> which I did 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Um, it, it's, it's good and bad. It, it, you know, so you got to get the product market fit and structure it right from the right. Once you get that, you know, it becomes easy. And there are a lot of great VCs. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal people now, more so now than it used to be. Right before now, there's so much money out there, a lot of talent out there. They can help you, but you got to get the product market fit first or right. getting close to it. Get some feedback. One or two customers looking at it. They can buy why they buy and what is it going to change? How is it going to change their life? And then you're going to finance it properly. If you don't finance, it's going to come and bite you. No matter what, the great ideas have evaporated and there's some dumb ideas that are done well because they organize it well. New episodes of the Cyberwork Podcast are available every Monday at 1 p.m. Central. And don't forget to check out our hands-on training series, Cyberwork Applied. Each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn to stay up to date on all things cyberwork.